Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about valence electrons. A uh, couple important things that you want to have with you as we talk about this are a periodic table. If you don't have your paper copy, you can go ahead and Google periodic table and pull one up. Um, I just picked one, but this looks like a pretty good one. It has the numbers across the top. It also has a key that tells you the atomic number, the symbol, the atomic weight, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so like I said before, every periodic table is slightly different, so you do want to orient yourself to your periodic table that you're using before you start. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so today we're going to talk about valence electrons. What is their charge? Where are they located? And what happens when you add or lose them? So let's review first. What charge do electrons have? If you said negative, you are right. Don't forget electrons are negative, protons are positive, and neutrons are neutral. Protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus, and electrons are located in the rings that surround it. Okay, um, so the, all the purple ones are your electrons. Today we're going to focus on just your valence electrons. So why are valence electrons important? The number of valence electrons in an atom determines two things, the properties of an atom and the way in which they are going to bond or connect with another atom. The properties of an atom refer to how explosive they are, can they react with water, are they very sturdy, do they like to be alone, um, can they bond with a metal, can they bond with a non-metal. All of the properties we're going to talk about in the next unit and same with bonding. Our next unit will be on bonding and connectivity. So valence electrons are located in the outermost energy level, or the valence shell. So when you draw that Bohr model, they are the outermost, the farthest ring that you have any electrons in. If you recall when we started drawing Bohr models, they were the ones that we circled or put a box around at the very beginning. Okay? There's a few tricks you can use to find the number of valence electrons. One of them is to simply look at the group numbers on the periodic table. So I'm going to skip ahead to... Are, I'm going to go back to the periodic table for a second. If we look at the group numbers on the periodic table at the top, the group numbers are at the top, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 18. I, you can look at the A's and the B's as well, but I find it easier to look at the actual numbers, so you want to keep that in mind. Okay. When we're looking at valence electrons, like I said before, the valence electrons are in the outermost shell. So here we can see that there's three electrons, but this Bohr model only has one because it's in the outermost shell. Down here, we can see that there are many electrons, but the valence electrons are only in the outermost shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's how you can find it on a Bohr model. You can look at the outermost shell. When you're looking at the periodic table, you, have, you always want to look at the groups. The groups go up and down. As you can see the arrows, they are going vertical. Periods go across. Okay. If you forget which way is which, you can always think at the end of a sentence, you read, which you read left to right, is a period. So here we read left to right, and periods go across. Okay. So now, like I said before, when we're looking at the periodic table, you want to look at your group numbers, and the group numbers are at the top. So here is group 1, here is group 2, and then we're going to skip this middle section for the time being, because you cannot use this trick for the middle section. We get over here and we find 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So how does the group number help us? Well, um, any group number is going to give you the number of valence electrons. So anything in group 1 is going to have 1 valence electron. Anything in group 2 will have 2. Anything in group 13 is actually going to have 3. Notice we got rid of the 1 in front of the 13. Anything in group 14 is going to have 4. Anything in group 15 will have 5. 16 will have 6. 17 will have 7, and group 18 will have 8. There is one exception in group 18. In group 18, or the noble gases, helium is our exception to the rule. Helium only has a total of 2 valence electrons. So if I jump back to the periodic table, we can see that helium's atomic number is 2, so that means there's only 2 protons and 2 electrons. Now it is in group 18, so while you would think that it would have 8 valence electrons, it can't have 8 
it only can have two because there's only two regular electrons. So that is the one exception to the rule. Okay. Now, eight is that magic number. Eight makes everybody happy. It is complete. It is an outer shell. So when eight is in that outermost ring, it is happy and it is stable. And that's what everyone strives to be. So let's do a little recap. Anything in group one is going to have one. Anything in group two will have two. 13 will have three. 14 will have four. 15 will have five. Notice we just get rid of the, number, the one in front of the group numbers and so forth. If you're looking at the Bohr model, you can look at the outermost ring. This is the valence shell, and the valence electrons are in that outermost shell. So here we see one, two, three, four, five. This is a very easy way to do it using the Bohr model, but you don't want to have to draw it every time. So the group number is much easier for you to reference. Um, remember, this does not work for that groups in the middle, groups 3 through 12. So you want to keep that in mind. Okay? So, little recap. What is the difference between a period and a group? Take a minute, think to yourself. A period, remember, goes left to right on the periodic table, and a group goes up and down. What are two ways you can de determine valence electrons? The first way you can determine valence electrons is by drawing the Bohr model and counting the electrons in the outermost shell. The second way is you can look at the group numbers. All right, let's do some practice. You do want to have your periodic table next to you, okay? So you want to have that right there as well. How many valence electrons does magnesium have? Take a minute. Find magnesium on the periodic table. What group number is magnesium in? Magnesium is in group two, which is great. Since it's in group two, it will have two valence electrons. Let's try another one. Phosphorus. Take a minute and find phosphorus on the periodic table. Phosphorus is in group 15, so it will have five valence electrons. Remember, when you get to groups 13 through 18, you simply get rid of the one that's the first digit in the group number. Let's try another one. Chlorine. What group is chlorine in? Chlorine is in group 17, so we get rid of this number one, so it has seven valence electrons. Let's try one last one. Helium. Take a minute and find helium. Helium is in group 18. So don't fall into the trap. Most people right off the bat want to say eight valence electrons, but remember helium is the exception to the rule. Even though helium is in group 18, it only has two regular electrons, so it can only have two valence electrons. Okay. Um, now take a couple minutes, reflect on what you learned in class today. If you had to summarize this to a friend, what would you say? If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.